What's up everyone, this is Oli aka Soul Warrior and it's time to break down another adventure. This time we are following Sasha, a rogue that is disguised as a non-ranged unit even though he has an active that can hit up to six or seven targets, I don't even know, that are like three tiles away. So quite an interesting unit with a unique set of capabilities. I know I kind of say this every time but I feel like these adventures keep getting better and better. I don't know what they're doing, what they're putting in the food and the snowprint offices but the balance between like tricky encounters we have to really think about coming up with a strategy and then the rewarding feeling of like finally mastering them it's getting better and better i couldn't have done this video without some help so up front i want to give some shout outs to lord Naku from my squad eternal nexus as well as ryzen formerly of german brothers fame the guild that is now known as dragonfall he also helped me out breaking down some of these encounters getting a perfect score in total we were able to get like a perfect score in the entire adventure however i didn't manage to do it on my own account just yet I will need another day if these adventures get any trickier in the future they need to be like five days long otherwise I don't think we can get perfect scores all right that was a lot of text up front last warning before we get started you will need either Salvo yeah. or Balmur together with Cinder Cinder is kind of a must in a, in a couple of these encounters otherwise you cannot get a perfect score so if you care about a perfect score in this adventure you will need a couple of these units but if you have them let's break it all down and show you how to get those perfect scores all right we're starting as always with common encounter number one it has the very typical um, requirements which are do not take any damage which um, can be a bit of a challenge and I've also been thinking about this one in particular for a little while so I'm starting with Tana but I think any unit that can just take out two units without much problem like a Scruffy for example could help you on that end then we want to create some shades you've heard this before and then when we have some shades we can like rather easily get this done honestly i don't know why i need like four attempts for this one this looks pretty straightforward now that i'm seeing it again in common encounter number two we see the very same requirements again take no damage i did master this once before but then i realized oh wait a second i took damage and healed it back and that doesn't count that's why nixie is in my squad however nixie is actually quite good in this encounter regardless so i'm showing you guys how let's just skip the introductions here and here we go we're starting we're kicking things off with sunshine sunshine can take care of the two guys on that little island at the top eventually and then after sunshine we use gigs to create some summons we want to always go for the maximum number of summons because that usually means that we're not going to get hit we're moving all of our units to the bottom of the map because as you can see here with the danger zone there's a lot of danger coming our way however we can change this by using nixie and her tree and all of a sudden all of these enemies cannot connect with us anymore because they are going to be standing next to the tree and half of them even do us a favor and suicide by attacking the tree instead of attacking us so that puts us in a really good position and now we can start to control the board here we got two more turns we do have ranged attackers we do have summons on the board i mean there's not that much else that we could hope for to be honest so and in the end that's basically it on our last turn where we can still fulfill the requirement for the lightning victory we get there and we get the perfect score common encounter number three is the first one with a bit of a special requirement we are not not allowed to play any mounted heroes we still are not allowed to take any damage but um, this is one of those you have like enough freedom of choice in terms of your unit selection so it's relatively easy to get this one done i think i was playing snazbang and then i didn't finish all of my enemies on the first turn which is a bit of a problem when um, there's a unit that tends to burn itself so on the second attempt i said okay let's bench snazbang and do this a little bit differently and we are as always going for my favorite strategy Strategy. let's create as many shades or summons as possible so that's what we're going for here and then eventually after softening these guys up I feel like all right I think I got this uh, moving Tana to the bottom might be a bit of a misplay to be honest because now we don't have that much going on at the top of the map on the other hand there's so many targets for my enemy and we can corner this guy with shades so he can't even get out of the corner so you you can't help but feel pretty secure here and on our last turn when we can still get the lightning victory we do eventually get the job done thanks to a little skeleton that is poking this guy and giving us the 600 points up for grabs in this encounter this takes us to the uncommon encounters 
And on the first one, we are now met with a very restrictive requirement. We are only allowed to play Blazing Brew Heroes. So I want to give a shout out to the level designers. Kyle was the one who put this one together. Again, Kyle is like the, the like mastermind behind of these all of these adventures these days. Um, this is the only encounter where you are required to play Blazing Brew Heroes. So look at this. I went with Salvo on the left took out these guys, then you need to use Sunshine, and then lastly you want to use Cinder. And that's basically what's like all there is to it. Now you have to get a little bit lucky. We see here Sunshine gets hit twice, but it's not a problem. And then we can follow this up with Salvo, and then Sunshine can go in. And we're in a, like a pretty good position, generally speaking. And there's one thing that I keep forgetting, and that's the fact that Sunshine can get healed. And here I'm just missing that move. I'm just not attacking. I'm, I'm, I am attacking with Sunshine, but I first have to heal him with Cinder. Cinder can repair Sunshine. And if you do that, if you get that right, you get the perfect score. There's yet another way getting this level done, and that is by using Salvo on these guys that are standing together, and then using the cannon on the guys on the left, using Sunshine to clean up at the top. And now you see we're in an even better spot than before because of those two horse archers that are that tend to be the most dangerous enemies. They are no longer able to do any damage to us. And here we can see the correct application of healing with Cinder, or repairing in this case, on Sunshine. All right, that was just an alternative, bit of an extra thingy for you guys. So this time we're being met with one of the more harsher to fulfill requirements and that is play no ranged units. It's my new favorite uh, requirement to hate because I love my ranged units. They always give me more control over the board and this is exactly what we do not have <laughs> because of um, this adventure requirement. All right, so what I'm doing here is I want to go in with Akio. Akio is very good because he can heal himself if he moves up next to a summon. So all we need are summons. So here are some, courtesy of Sir Matt. And then we also want to bring in Yasmin, because first of all, Yasmin can allow us to create even more summons, which is always good. And on top of that, she can also heal a unit. And yes, this doesn't look great. There's a lot of enemies still on the board. However, we are now in a really good position controlling this whole thing. So we are forced to use uh, Yasmin here and um, refresh Sir Matt. That's uh, not a big problem because we can get those summons in front of us and also make sure that the enemies um, can only attack the summons really. And now they have a lot of health and you can see these horse archers, they are quite annoying but they're not that dangerous. At least when they are not able to attack you from a range, like from, from, di from a distance when they are standing right in front of you. And we also, keep in mind, have those Yasmin buffs, those all important Yasmin buffs that allowed us to um, increase the attack of our other units, which means it's very easy pickings for our units to take out these enemies and then we also happen to have Arceo and that's basically all we need here. There might be another strategy, I think I've seen other strategies, this is what I came up with, hope it works for you. That takes us to uncommon encounter number three with one of the easier to fulfill requirements and that is only play rogues because that gives us a wide variety of units. There's a lot of good rogues in this game. Let's skip the unit selection on this encounter because I think it took me a little while and then eventually I'm feeling like, all right, this is the way to go. We want to open up with gigs and hit in the middle. We don't want to go for maximum effect and deal as, um, as much damage as possible. We want to create as many frogs as possible, summons. We want to just make sure that our enemies can cannot connect with us. Then we're cleaning the board on the left side and now it's time to slowly move forward basically. We still have to keep in mind um, there's some enemies coming our way and we do have a Katsume. So we're waiting for the enemies to come our way and I think this is not working out whatsoever. So pick a better spot for your Katsume if you're trying to follow this strategy or you move um, or you move Naivis behind her. That should also work. All right, and now I'm slowly advancing towards the top. We do have time, we do have time. There's not that much pressure um, for us here. And we do have a lot of summons, so, so we're kinda in the green here. And then all of a sudden, we do have those very powerful frog warriors and they can keep our enemies at bay. And now this looks like we basically won this. We just have to take apart the enemies, like pick apart them one by one. Still have Sunshine's active, by the way. So this looks pretty, pretty good. And this is basically over here. We are finishing in style with Katsuma's active. And that gives us the lightning victory in time with 500 points. 
This takes us to the rare encounters where we are required to play only red heroes. The first rare encounter is a bit of a tricky one, but not quite impossible to beat. I just need a little while until I select my units here and figure out this is the best opening for my squad. So. We are kicking things off with Sunshine, as always. Sunshine is like a really, really good opener, by the way. Also in Arena, generally speaking. You wanna move your units a little bit to the bottom right, in my opinion. And another thing that is kinda important is always block those uh, whirlwinds that allow units to travel from one place to another on the map. You don't wanna, um, you wanna make sure that they are not suddenly appearing behind you, because that could be a bit of a problem. Now the enemies are kinda busy dealing with that cannon, courtesy of Cinder, which is not much of a problem for us, this is like quite welcome in fact. And actually Karadan, the latest adventure hero, or festival hero, the latest festival hero, is getting his big moment to shine here. We, uh, thanks to Sir Tristan, we are not yet damaged with the exception of Sunshine, but that's not much of a problem because Sunshine can be repaired. At this point I had figured it out. It took me a while, I have to admit, it took me a while, but I eventually figured it out. Now we do have a ranged unit, that means we can always first weaken these enemies and then after we weaken them, we can finish them with sunshine, <laughs> more often than not. I mean it's his adventure after all. Cinder isn't doing anything, we're just placing Cinder here on the healing pad, that makes a lot of sense. And now this is more or less over, we can first repair sunshine and then after repairing sunshine we still have Caradan and thanks to his passive Sir Tristan we are finishing this enemy as well and get the perfect score. Whew, kind of hard to get there. Rare encounter number two. We are not allowed to play any ranged heroes. I think I suggested this a while back that I want to have requirements that do not allow you to play a certain kind of unit. I regret that decision. Although actually, I mean, it makes for more fun adventures, at least if you're asking me. So this is the strategy that I went with. This is the all-in on Tanamo strategy, basically. We're using Pilato, and then we're buffing Tanamo, and then after that, we just slice and dice through everything. We're not getting a crit hit here. So this is a, not a successful attempt, but like I said, the strategy should work if you get one more crit hit. And this is the strategy that Lord Nako showed me. I played Nimrul ironically on this encounter, but I never combined Nimrul together with Tanamo. And this is relatively easy if you just do it this way. And then we go with Sunshine and, and that's all there is to it. Lord Nako made this really look easy. There's a third strategy for this particular encounter. Let's just quickly go back. The third strategy for this encounter is opening with Nimrul on the bottom left. So instead of slicing through your enemies with Tana here, you're moving in with Nimrul, hope to not crit immediately when you just move next to the enemies, and then you take out these guys with the active of Nimrul. Then you place Silver Root on the healing pad, and you fire with Sunsh? I don't think you fire, I think you just stand there. And then the enemies are gonna um, hit Silver Root. Actually, you do fire with Sunshine. Yes, you fire with Sunshine to the top. These guys are gonna hit Silver Root, but they don't kill him. Um, also, Sunshine, you move him to the right. And then uh, Silverwood gets hit a couple of times, but it's not a big problem because he's on the healing pad. And then the next turn you can attack someone with Sunshine and after that finish with Silverwood. For the record, in case you did not know, Kyle always tries to create these adventures. So you do not require Tanamo, which is interesting. I never knew this and I do not agree with this decision whatsoever. <laughs> All right, that takes us to rank counter number three. We are now deploying rogues. That's something we can get behind. This is the absolute cheese fest. This is the easiest encounter in this entire festival. I saw this and was like, Jesus Christ, this must be a joke. So unit selection takes two seconds, maybe three. And obviously you wanna go with Snapspang, obviously you wanna go with Gigs, and obviously you need to play Sunshine. I mean, this is as straightforward as it gets. Ha somehow, Yasmin survived this, but we do have a third attacker. I mean, like, talk about overkill. This is the weirdest encounter in this entire adventure, although uh, also the funnest encounter. That takes us to encounter number four, where we are supposed to play heroes that are not mounted. So that takes us um, out of Arceo. There is no Sir Matt. There is no Tim Tim. There's a lot of units that we're missing here. But we still have a couple of units that are A, quite good, and B, allow us to get like a lot of summons on the board. 
like in this case the all-star summoners this is like the all-star squad of summoners i mean look at this we got dogger we do have gigs on top of that and then like just to completely make it hard for opponents and, and feel like what is happening here we also throw in queen akashu for good measure i mean i really feel like this is overkill to be honest when i look at this um i, I think i might have gone a little bit too far on this encounter all right so, this is the opening, and I mean, honestly, what is the enemy gonna do here? We have so many frogs on the board, yes, they can throw them around, and yes, they can take them out, but we're still left with infinite summons, even after our opponents all got their little hit in. So we have two more turns to get the, uh, the lightning victory, which is nice, I appreciate that, about the level. Uh, here you should first move Queen Akesho a little bit more to the front and then attack. You always want to get your units a little bit closer to the border, like closer to the front lines, because you, you're you basically on the clock. You need to finish these encounters in time before the um, special victory conditions are running out. Well, not victory conditions, but rather the special points conditions. And look at this, I can only connect with kicks, so it would have been way better to also move Queen Akesho a little bit to the front. But in the end it works out, and we do get the 500 points. The last rare encounter. We are not allowed to play ranged heroes, I hate myself. And we <laughs> still have to play rogues. So this is a bit of a restriction. Um, we, we do not have that much choice with both of these conditions being met at the same time. On the bright side, we only have to play three units. So it's not that hard to fulfill that request since we don't have to play that many units that check all of these boxes. So this is what I'm going with here. I'm going with Tanamo at the top. I'm going with Nimrod at the bottom. Uh, actually, I'm going with Sunshine at the bottom. And then there's one more enemy, but Nimrod just can slice and dice through everything. And that's basically it here. 600 points are ours. And we're getting closer to that final victory chest. Now for the epic encounters. All of these were like somewhat hard. I always needed several attempts to get them done, get them right. But in the end, I was able to succeed in all of them. Again, uh, thanks to some help of Lord Nako, who um, is like the absolute resident expert when it comes to all things Cinder. It's one of his favorite units. This is a really good strategy. You won't always get to hit two enemies or take out two enemies with Sunshines active here, but more often than not, you do. And then look at this. I mean, we're already in a really, really good position here. So all of a sudden there's only one enemy remaining, he, sh he hit Sunshine again, which is not a problem, I explained this before, you can obviously heal Sunshine with Cinder. So we're just thinking about, okay, how do we move our units so, so we can make sure that we can basically double team on the last enemy and uh, we're not missing out on all of that extra damage that we need to get in in time before the turn clock is over. Alright, so Myvera starts picking apart this guy at the top. He is hulking, if I remember correctly. That's why he only moves one spot here. That's kind of important, otherwise he could connect with us. And now we can move our units towards the bottom. We will be able to connect with this guy again next turn. And we can also do some more damage on the last enemy. So we're moving Cinder in the middle. We're moving Sunshine next to Cinder, so we can repair Sunshine. And then Myvara moves to the bottom, finishes one of these enemies. And now we're in a really good spot because we have two units that can connect with this last enemy. Uh, all of our units are healed. I just double checked basically. I tried to repair again, but it wasn't able. I wasn't able to. So I did have the full score. And that's how you get the lightning victory and full points in this encounter. Epic encounter number two requires us to not play mounted units. And once you see that encounter, we also have to play red units, you will know why. Because, I mean, this just looks like a Lionet level if I've ever seen one, but we're not allowed to play Lionet. So I tried this like two or three times. In the end, I succeeded by putting Nimrod's double swords, or basically any weapon with a very high crit rate on my Vera. That's one part of the puzzle. And then the second part of the puzzle, for me at least, was bringing in Pilator. Because you have to have a crit hit with my Vara, at least if you're following the strategy that I am laying out here. So we are going in with Sunshine. The, the only problem here is the guy in the middle, the Palace Guard, once again. It's always the Palace Guards. This just brings you flashbacks to the desert levels back in the days. We're taking like a par we're taking out three enemies with a snazz bang and then there's like another bang and this time it's my Vara. And thanks to that little extra help from Pelato, we did get all the crits we needed and that gives us the perfect score. In the last epic encounter, we are not allowed to play any ranged heroes. Now, I'm afraid I don't have a strategy here that does not involve a lot of legendary units or at least one legendary unit and that's Dorga. I don't see how you can do this without Dorga 
If you have a strategy that does not feature Dorga and you manage to get a perfect score, let us know. Please leave a comment below and let us know. Although I'm not even getting that many frogs here, I think the core idea of the strategy that I am employing here is something that everybody can uh, follow. And we're again going with the, with the guys that we saw in a, one of the earliest encounters, and that's of course Sir Matt, because we get summons. Akio because he can heal himself when he moves next to summons and Yasmin because she can heal someone and give us even more summons and uh, that's basically the opening that I went with. So this doesn't look great, you can see that here. We are taking some damage for Dorga but we do have three more turns and we do still have summons on the board so it's not the end of the world, we're like in an okay situation here. So now I'm just like looking at the entire board again and I'm trying to figure out what we are going to do. We are not able to go for Sir Matt's active for a second time. We need to use Yasmin here on Dorga. That's very, very important. Like always basically make a mental note and like realize for yourself, okay, who do I have to heal? Who can I heal in this encounter? So this is how I'm doing this. I'm just basically trying to like establish control over the board. We bring out Dorga again and now we're taking some damage, but this time it's Akio. And Dorga is taking even more damage, but it's not a problem. Alright, and this is the last turn that we have. Yes, it's not the last turn for the Lightning Victory, but it's the last turn that we have if we want to win this encounter without um, risking not getting the perfect score. So I'm thinking about this, I'm saying, okay, Sunshine takes out one unit, then it's time for the big heal action. There we go. So Dorga is now healed, that's pretty good. Akio is now healed by moving next to a summon. Alternatively, you can first go for Dorga, but then you risk that you... Uh, actually, you do get a frog, but you risk that the enemies are being taken out. And then we got it. We got it all sorted out. In the end, with Akio's spectacular finish, we do get the 500 points. Bit clumsy, but it works. All of this effort takes us to the legendary encounter where we are required to deploy Rogue. So generally speaking, this doesn't sound like the biggest challenge but it's not super easy. The all-star team that I assembled, where I feel like I think they can do this, was Snazbang. Yes, I know that's a bit weird because he takes damage when he when he crits. Um, but we do have a healing spot on the board. Giggs and then Sunshine. What I'm showing you in this is basically how you can get all of the stars in the encounter. I didn't quite manage to also get a perfect score. I think that it has something to do, or at least like it could have something to do with this like layup that we are going for here. So it's kind of important to time all of your attacks perfectly and figure out where you want to connect. The problem is Harun. Harun has infinite range. I mean, yes, it's four, but it's actually infinite. They, they misspelled infinite on his uh, text description. And then the other thing that you want is a lot of frogs from Geeks. Either a lot of frogs or no frogs whatsoever. So here we're going with no frogs. This is a no frog strategy. But if we had like one or two, I think we would be in a way better situation here. All right. So now we can again move in with Nimrul. And I think this is actually a misplay when I'm seeing this now. Considering the fact that he's blocking the healing pad. Because we need the healing pad for either Geeks or Snazbang. I was greedy, I wanted to go for Nimrul, and obviously that works. And we do get... We, go, we, are, we are able to take the enemy out here. One with Sunshine, the other one probably with Snazbang, I think so. I think with Kicks. No, I don't wanna I don't wanna set more tiles on fire. So I'm now moving Snazbang to the right uh, to the left, I remember that. Because I wanted to somehow manage to still get the perfect score um, by healing my units. So if I hadn't been this greedy, I would have gotten the third star and would have managed to get like at least the, the medals for the level. I didn't get the perfect score. Alright, so now we do have a video by Razen who is able to get the perfect score. So I'm sure that this is somewhat hard to um, copy for a couple of guys out there, especially those who do not happen to have a legendary Katsuma but generally speaking this is a strategy that is working I'm trying to give you like a complete picture of what's a what's uh, working in this encounter so here the key again is gigs we need a lot of units for gigs and honestly I didn't see this coming whatsoever Katsuma's active can take out the palace guard I never thought this would be possible and then we see that we're losing all of our frogs we needed all of these frogs to the attacks of the horse archers. I think there is a world in which you don't need that many frogs because you're still gonna be okay. 
putting a unit on the healing spot. But then again, on the other hand, which you saw in my run, it's kind of hard to get that done. Here, I was totally expecting that Tanamo is just going through and cutting through all of the enemies. Um, unfortunately, that's not what happens. I mean, this is always like the best finish to any level, if you're asking me. Just use Tanamo and just slice and dice through everything. But apparently, this is not what works. I think um, it is the correct play to first damage Harun. I mean, that's pre pretty much the obvious play. And then after that obvious play, we need to move in with Tanamo and try to do um, as much damage as possible. And there's a chance that this is just a question of who do you attack first. Um, maybe if we attack Harun first, Tanamo is then required to go to the other guys in the correct order. And we do get all of these attacks in and we do manage to get the perfect score on the last turn. In the end, this worked out for Raisin. He did get the perfect score and I think this completes his adventure. He's already done. I still have to do like one or two encounters where I did not get the perfect score, even though I was able to show you guys the perfect strategy for those respective encounters. I hope that helped. Like I said at the very beginning, I think this was one of the most challenging adventures, but in the end it was possible to beat it in like every single encounter. I feel for those of you who don't happen to have a Salvo or a Balmo, I just drew like Salvo half a week ago or something. I immediately had to get him to level 17 for one of those encounters in the adventure. That's what I love about them. They always force me to work on some units that I kind of neglected before, unless their name is Adasi, of course. All right, that's already it for today. I hope those walkthroughs helped you get some more scores in some of these encounters and you're going to be able to ascend and promote sunshine a unit with a lot of potential and she's bound to only get better because we see more and more mechanics make their way into the game especially with the festival that is featuring more of the hive heroes once again shout out to my man uh, lord narco on the one hand and raisin i couldn't have done it without you guys thank you so so much and of course also to kyle who even showed me one or two strategies because i was kind of struggling in some of these encounters early on that's all for today see you guys on the discord of of course in the Legend League. Take care and bye bye.